In Activity 10, Controlling a Plane, students learn how the flight path of an airplane is controlled. They first identify the control surfaces of an airplane and then investigate how changing the position of the control surfaces changes the flight path of an airplane. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 10, Parts A and B, foam gliders, sticky notes, and masking tape. You will also need to provide scissors. To prepare for Session 1, each team of two will need a foam glider. To begin Session 1, remind students of the work they did in Activity 9. Have them recall how their wingless wonders traveled along the fishing line. Ask students, how do pilots control the flight path of real airplanes? Students who have flown before may have noticed the adjustable flaps on the wings. Divide the class into teams of two and give a glider to each team. Then, instruct teams to assemble the gliders by sliding the wing and tail pieces through the slots in the fuselage and attaching the propeller to the nose of the craft. Explain that on real planes, the wings and tail assembly have flaps that the pilot can move up and down, or left and right, to control the position of the plane in the air. These flaps are called control surfaces. Control surfaces give the pilot control of the plane's direction by changing the airflow over the surface of the plane, which causes the plane to turn or tilt. Point out that objects traveling across the ground can only move left or right, but objects that travel through the air can also tip side to side and move up and down. Then, collect the gliders and place them where they will not get damaged. They will be used again in Session 2. To prepare for Session 2, make a copy of Activity Sheet 10, Parts A and B, for each student. Each team will need their foam glider, a pair of scissors, some masking tape, and four small sticky notes. Have extra sticky notes available throughout the session. Then, identify an area where students can properly launch their gliders. To begin Session 2, distribute Activity Sheet 10, Parts A and B, and the materials to each team. Have students bring a pencil with them and head to the test flight area, where they should line up opposite one another. Give each team a glider and two strips of masking tape to use for their launching lines. Note that to achieve straight and level flight, the wings and tail assembly should be straight and centered. Next, bring students' attention to the diagram of the plane on Part A of their activity sheet. Point out the elevators, or the flaps located on the horizontal stabilizers of the tail assembly. Explain that the elevators control the up and down movement of the aircraft. Distribute a sticky note and a pair of scissors to each team and instruct students to cut the note in half and press each piece on the horizontal stabilizer of the tail to make elevators. Ask students to think about how the air would flow past the plane with the elevators in different positions. Then, students should bend the elevators down and launch their planes. Tell students to bend the elevators up and ask, how do you think your glider will move now? Students should predict that the plane will climb. Have students launch their gliders again and ask, how did your glider move with the elevators up? Students should respond that the glider climbed with the elevators up. Finally, instruct students to remove the sticky notes from their gliders. Once again, direct students' attention to the diagram of the plane on part A of their activity sheets. Point out the rudder, the single flap located on the vertical stabilizer of the tail assembly. Some students may already know that a boat rudder is used to turn a boat. Students should infer that the rudder on an airplane is used to turn a plane to the left or right. Distribute another sticky note to each team and tell students to cut the note in half and press one piece on the vertical stabilizer to make a rudder. Give students a minute to think about how the air would flow past the plane with the rudder turned in different positions. Then, instruct the students to bend the rudder to the right and launch the glider. For this trial, the nose of the glider should turn to the right. Then, bend the rudder to the left. Students should predict that the plane will turn to the left. Have students launch their gliders. As predicted, the nose of the glider turns to the left. Again, have students remove the sticky notes from their gliders. Then, turn students' attention to the diagram of the plane on Part A of their activity sheets and point out the ailerons, or the flap located on each wing. The ailerons make the plane roll from side to side, Explain that on real planes, the ailerons always work together. One tilts up while the other tilts down. Distribute two more sticky notes to each team and have them place one note on each wing to make ailerons. Ask, how would you move the ailerons to make the plane roll to the left? How would you move them to make the plane roll to the right? Allow students time to move their ailerons to make their gliders bank to the left and to the right. 
informs students that real pilots use all of the plane's control surfaces together in order to control its flight path. For the next trial, students should leave the ailerons in place with the right aileron tilted up and the left aileron tilted down and reattach the rudder. Then, tell students to bend the rudder to the right and launch their plane. Students will observe how much more effectively the plane turns when the ailerons and rudder work together rather than alone. Finally, have students retrieve their gliders and examine the nose of the craft. Students should recall that the propellers produce thrust to move the plane forward. Ask students, where would you put the propeller to make it lift the plane up instead of moving it forward? Students should be able to figure out that putting a propeller on top of the plane would produce an upward thrust or lift. Then ask, what would you call your new aircraft? Guide students to correctly identify the aircraft as a helicopter. Then inform them that in the next activity, helicopters, they are going to learn about helicopters and how they fly. To conclude session two, have students gather their materials and return to the classroom. Ask students to dismantle their gliders and return them to their package sleeve. Leave one glider assembled for use in activity 11. Return all materials to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.